our lead story tonight. Well, this is uh, the biggest state elections currently and seen as a crucial barometer of which way 2024 will go. Why is phase one of the Uttar Pradesh poll so crucial? Well, today, 58 seats have voted. Now, that's a quarter to the halfway mark. Uh, just over 200 seats, 58 seats voted today. Now, the BGP won 53 of 58 in 2017. It actually had a 91% strike rate. But this time, they're facing a tough fight from the Akhilesh Yadav, Jain Chaudhary combination. This, sadly, has also been the epicenter of religious polarization, especially after the Muzaffar Nagar riots. And much of the rhetoric this campaign has also focused on this kind of divisive rhetoric. In fact, even today, Uttar Pradesh's chief minister has said that vote today to make sure that Uttar Pradesh doesn't become like Kerala, West Bengal or Kashmir. The opposition took this as a direct comment on the minority populations of these states. In fact, the chief minister of Kerala hit back saying Uttar Pradesh would actually be lucky if it got the same development models, whether it's health or education of Kerala, which is the highest in India. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also had his first physical rally in Uttar Pradesh today in Saharanpur, which votes on the 14th. The Prime Minister hit out at Akhilesh Yadav and the Samajwadi Party, saying they're responsible for causing riots. The opposition, meanwhile, hit back as well. As millions turned out to vote in 58 assembly seats in Western UP, the Chief Minister, seen as battling a farmer backlash in many seats, put out this controversial message. Vote carefully, otherwise UP will become like Kashmir, Kerala and Bengal. The comment invited a sharp retort not just from the opposition, but from the other states' leaders with the common refrain, people of UP would want the development of these other states. प्रधान मंत्री जी के भी बयान आ रहे हैं और योगी जी ने भी जो वोट अपील किया आपने देखा उसमें कहा कि उत्तर प्रदेश को केरल और बंगाल मत बनने दो आप केरल में लिटरेसी रेट देखेंगे आप प्रति व्यक्ति जीडीपी के आंकड़े देखेंगे तो केरल प्रदेश हमसे बहुत ज्यादा आगे है तो ये तो इस तरह की बातें कर रहे हैं जमीनी मुद्दों से भड़काना चाह रहे हैं आप मुझे बच्चा कह लो लड़का कह लो मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता in a tweet, Chief Minister Vijayan of Kerala said that if UP turned into Kerala, the state may enjoy better health services and education services, greater social welfare, and the people will not be murdered along religious and caste lines. Congress MP from Kerala, Shashi Tarutu, joined in, saying that UP should be lucky to get Kashmir's beauty, Bengal's culture, and Kerala's education. And that UP is wonderful, pity about its government. And Omar Abdullah, former JNK Chief Minister, tweeted, he should be so lucky, JNK has less poverty, better human development indices. What we lack is good governance over the last three, four years, but that's a temporary phenomenon. In Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Adityanath's comments were immediately committed to a political discourse. While members of the opposition said that this is a sign of BJP's desperation, many leaders of the Bharatiya Janata Party said that this is a stern warning by Yogi Adityanath and the BJP regime to all those who want to create a sense of disquiet in the state. In Saharanpur, the Prime Minister who held his first in-person rally in the UP campaign didn't attack the other states but went head-to-head -head with the SP and Congress. Akhilesh countered the BJP's plank of a double-engine Sarkar, that is, a BJP government at both the centre and in UP. Double West UP has been a significant political laboratory for the BJP. 
where polarization politics won the BJP good dividends in 2014, 17 and 19. But this time round, farmer leaders like Rakesh Takayat say that West UP will not become a pitch for Hindu-Muslim politics. The first phase of the marathon, seven phase UP polls is over. Polarizing statements like these have been the hallmark of the political discourse. With Sanket Upyathya, Chetan Bhattacharji for NDTV. And what's the latest on the election radar? Well, Sanket has been traveling across West UP tonight. He's in Muzaffarnagar. Now, remember, this is the site of where those riots actually happened. And now, however, Akhilesh Yadav and Jayan Chaudhary are saying that Uttar Pradesh needs a new era here. The BJP, we heard the Prime Minister saying, don't forget who caused those riots. Sanket analyzes why exactly this first phase is so important. Sanket. Yes, it's called the mother of all political battles for no reason. First, let's talk about Western Uttar Pradesh and why it is important. 58 constituencies, one-fourth of the seats to achieve the halfway mark. Uh, this is, of course, the Jat belt, a very uh, Muslim-dominated belt also, and these factors are at play. Last time around, the Jats uh, openly went with the Bharatiya Janata Party. That gave them a phenomenal figure. They had a strike rate of 91% from this area, from these 58 seats. This time around, which way will the 17% jarts go is going to be very interesting. There are two claimants now, the BJP as well as the RLDSP combined. On the other hand, which way will the Muslims go? Remember, this was the place where religious polarization was at its peak post-2013 Muzaffar Nagar riots. Rakesh Tikait also is a very prominent leader from Muzaffar Nagar and he led the anti-farmers agitation. So that factor too at play in these pockets. Now let's talk about the big national picture, why these elections matter a lot nationally. It's known as the semi-finals ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha poll. So what happens here will have a bearing on 2024. Number two, this could perhaps be a referendum on Yogi Adityanath's uh, leadership as a big, tall, national level BJP leader. Number three, uh, a new coalition or a rainbow coalition in the opposition with Mamta Banerjee openly campaigning for Akhilesh Yadav. If Akhilesh wins, Mamta plus Akhilesh plus RLD, will this be a new grouping in the opposition propelled by a victory in Uttar Pradesh? That is very significant. And also significant will be to keenly watch how the Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi manages in these elections. Can she revive the prospects of the Congress party? Because that will again mean a lot in 2024. Sanket, thanks so much. Well, also, importantly, in the Prime Minister's first physical Uttar Pradesh rally, there was an outreach to Muslim women. He didn't refer to the current hijab row, but he made the point that it was the BGP government which abolished triple talaq, and he said the opposition couldn't accept that Muslim women were now saying the name of Prime Minister Modi. He added that again now a new attempt is being made to stop the progress of Muslim women. <laughs> तीन तलाक के जुल्म से मुक्ति दिलाई है और हमने जो तीन तलाक के खिलाफ कानून बनाया है उसने मुस्लिम बहनों को सुरक्षा का विश्वास दिया है लेकिन साथियों जब मुस्लिम बहन बेटियों का समर्थन खुले आम भाजपा को मिलने लगा तो जो कुछ वोटों के ठेकेदार होते हैं उनकी निंद हराम हो गई वो बेचैन हो गए अरे हमारी ही बेटी मोदी मोदी करने लग गई और इसलिए मुस्लिम बहन बेटियों का उनको हक रोकने के लिए उनके विकास के आकांक्षाओं को रोकने के लिए नए नए तरीके खोजे जा रहे हैं this as the case on whether religious attire can be allowed in classrooms is being heard by the Karnataka High Court. A three-judge bench began hearing the case today. There's no order yet. The bench is headed by the Karnataka Chief Justice. So the 
court has said that currently there should be no religious attire in any classrooms. The next hearing will be at 2.30 on Monday and the court will look at an order perhaps then. But as of now, the hearing will resume at 2.30 on Monday. But also today on the first day of voting in Uttar Pradesh, the Allahabad High Court has granted bail to the Minister of State for Home's son, Ashish Mishra. Now, of course, this comes at a crucial time in Uttar Pradesh politics, the first phase of voting. The opposition has attacked the government. Alok, you're currently at that very jail. Now, uh, Mr. Mishra has just been in that jail for four months. So we've seen lots of reactions coming in, even though it's a court decision where they've actually slammed the special uh, police team that was set up to investigate this case. Well, you're absolutely right. I'm outside the Lakhimpur prison and we don't know when Ashish Mishra will be released. Certainly not today. Uh, questions have been raised about the propriety of giving jail to somebody like Ashish Mishra. He spent just four uh, months in jail and he's a murder accused, influential son of an influential minister, no less. And there are questions being raised about whether he'll walk out of here and start intimidating witnesses. The Allahabad High Court order asks him not to do it. But who is to say he will not follow it? But why has he got bail? What was the court's reasoning about giving him bail and uh, how is it that he has managed to get bail in a case as serious as murder and a criminal conspiracy? Let's just take a look at this story. Bail in just four months for Ashish Mishra, the murder accused son of India's junior home minister, Ajay Mishra Taini. Ashish is accused of masterminding this, an attack on protesting farmers in which four farmers and a journalist were killed in UP's Lakhimpur Kheri last October. इस सरकार के रहते हुए जो है कि हम लोगों को पहले भी कोई उम्मीद नहीं थी और ना ही अब उम्मीद है जो कि इतनी जल्दी इनको जो है कि जमानत मिल जाना कोई अच्छी बात नहीं है. The police says Mishra was present at the spot, but in its bail order, the Allahabad High Court rejected the police case against the minister's son. The court questioned the minister's son's role in the firing, crushing farmers and rejected the police investigation. The court said that no firearm injuries were found on the deceased or the injured. The court also said that the accused allegedly instigated the driver to crush victims, but the driver was killed by protesters. The court added that it cannot shut its eyes to the killing of three persons sitting inside the Thar vehicle. Tamam sari evidence हमारे पास है जो मैंने एसआईटी को दिया भी था जांच के समय बट उसको एसआईटी ने सबमिट नहीं किया चार सीट में उसके मैंने उनको दिया था करीब डेढ़ सौ फोटो दिए थे जिसमें सारी एविडेंस है कि वो दो तीस से तीन तीस तक दंगल में थे तो ऐसी हियर से एविडेंस है वो कोई कोजेंट एविडेंस नहीं है नहीं लड़ाई हमारी जारी रहेगी और जमानत मिल गई इसका मतलब ये है कि केस खत्म हो गया और वो बरी हो गए हैं इनकी सरकार है केंद्र में भी राज्य में भी थी इनकी सरकार इन्होंने अपना उसका फायदा उठाया है और इसका खामियाजा इनको भुगतना पड़ेगा कहीं ना कहीं हो सकता है जनता इनको इसी चुनाव में ही मतलब अपना जवाब दे देगी अ क्यूरियस केस इन द बेल ऑर्डर इज दैट इट डज नॉट मैंशन द टू मेन चार्जेस एज पर दी एफ अगेंस्ट आशीष मिश्रा मर्डर एंड क्रिमिनल कॉन्स्पिरसी The lawyer for Mishra says that it may be a mistake. The lawyer for the victim says that he will use it to oppose Mishra's release. The bail for the BJP Union Minister's son comes in the middle of the UP Assembly election. The party has not fielded the minister as a campaigner. While the BJP was silent today, the opposition questioned the swift bail in such a heinous and politically sensitive case and said Ashish Mishra could intimidate witnesses once out of jail. आज उस लड़के को जमानत मिली है थोड़े ही दिनों में खुल के घूमेगा फिर से जिसने आपको कुचल डाला इस सरकार ने किसको बचाया उन किसानों के परिवारों को बचाया उनकी जो पुलिस थी प्रशासन थी कहा थी वो जब उनको कुचला और इसलिए हम लेस देन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स गो प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी इन हिस्स फर्स्ट कॉमेंट्स ऑन द लखीमपुर अटैक सेट द आदित्यनाथ गवर्नमेंट हैंडल द केस इन अ फेयर मैनर Ashish's union minister father Ajay Mishra filmed here lunching at journalists and abusing them when asked about his son a few weeks ago continues in his post despite widespread outrage It is not clear when Ashish Mishra will walk out of prison it could be as early as Friday In Lakhimpur with Pratik Srivastava and camera person Rajesh Gupta this is Alok Pandey NDTV
and along with Uttar Pradesh, the focus now shifts to Uttarakhand and Goa, where voting will take place on Monday. So Congress leader Rahul Gandhi campaigning in Uttarakhand, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in Goa. Takkar Modi, Modi ki Congress party deti hai. Unhone sahi kaha. Rahul Gandhi Narendra Modi ki nahi sunta. वो नरेंद्र मोदी जी सोचते हैं कि सबको उनसे डर लगता है सोचते हैं कि ईडी सीबीआई से मैं किसी को भी दबा दूं मुझे नरेंद्र मोदी से डर नहीं लगता पिछली साल जब कोरोना हुआ था आपके घर में राशन देने के लिए कौन आया था आम आदमी पार्टी आई थी उस टाइम बीजेपी कहां थी उस टाइम कांग्रेस कहां थी उस टाइम दूसरी पार्टियां कहां थी उस टाइम गोवा सरकार कहां थी किसी ने आपकी मदद नहीं की आम आदमी पार्टी के कार्यकर्ता घर घर जाके राशन बांट रहे थे आम आदमी पार्टी के कार्यकर्ता घर घर ऑक्सीमीटर लेके दवाइयां लेके जा रहे थे साठ साल में इन पार्टियों ने आपको जमीनों का हक नहीं दिया मैंने इस पूरे केस की स्टडी की है छह महीने के अंदर सरकार बनने के छह महीने के अंदर आपको अपने जमीनों का हक दिलवाया जाए Well, the other big headline tonight is the Reserve Bank of India leaving lending rates unchanged. This is a bit of course to boost growth. Also concern over rising food inflation. What's making headlines, however, is RBI governor's comments on private cryptocurrency, where he said there's absolutely no underlying value in private crypto at all. Overall, taking into consideration the out to the surprise and relief and of many watching the RBI today, there was no hike in interest rates. Lending rate has remained at four percent for almost two years now. The immediate focus on faster growth. Large buffer stocks of cereals. and effective supply side measures augur well for food inflation core inflation remains elevated but demand pull pressures are still muted however there are a number of concerns the central bank listed the growth forecast is 7.8% lower than 8% that the center's economic policy forecast last week inflation for the current year is estimated at 5.3% and core inflation remains elevated private consumption a major driver of growth continues to lag also the rbi asserted that cryptocurrencies are a threat to financial stability while india is likely to grow at 9.2% in the current year that's because of a low base effect the economy shrunk the previous year in fact the headwinds remain if crude prices head towards 100 dollars a barrel again As per a projection by Goldman Sachs, the RBI's forecast for inflation at 4.5% next year may go for a toss. Inflation concerns were also mentioned, with the RBI governor stating core inflation remains elevated. Remember, rising inflation is also a global concern. Markets and experts cheering this decision of not hiking interest rates in the last monetary policy for this fiscal. Sakshi Bajaj for NDTV. Well, as India's COVID cases continue to drop, uh, curbs have been eased for international travellers into India. There will now be no mandatory quarantine according to the new rules which came out today. There's no need for passengers uh, to undertake a RT-PCR test now on the eighth day. No seven-day quarantine. Travellers from abroad have to self-monitor for 14 days, and they have to fill a self-declaration form, which they did earlier. And they continue to upload a negative test conducted within 72 hours of the travel date and of vaccination. The countries uh, which these new rules apply to include Canada, Hong Kong, US, the UK, Bahrain, Qatar, Australia, New Zealand, and many European nations. However, passengers found to be symptomatic will be immediately quarantined and tested. There's no. category of at risk current uh, countries anymore and rt pcr tests at the airport will be now random